Hi folks, welcome to part five of our fixture recap series. In this video, we're gonna walk through four of the videos where we've covered CAD, CAM, and machining workflows around holding multiple parts so that every time you hit cycle start, you can have your CNC machine make multiple parts at the same time. And we're starting off with widget 119. We had to make, I think about 500 of these keychains, and we did so in an orange dual station vise. On the left side, we have a pair of soft jaws that have cutouts to hold four raw pieces of saw cut brass. Card here to watch our soft jaw recap fixturing videos. If you're gonna pursue a fixture design like this, you need to make sure you have consistent length on your material so that you don't have a part that's too short and thus not adequately clamped, which may come loose, especially under heavier load or roughing strategy style cutting. On this fixture, we were able to cut four op ones on the left and then when those were done, move them over to the right-hand set of soft jaws to finish off four more. So every time we hit cycle start, we're getting four finished parts off the machine. We did this on our Tormach 1100, which doesn't have enough Y travel for an orange dual station vise, but mounting it in X worked fine, and we used a ratchet instead of a traditional vise handle that made it easier to open and close the vise in between runs. Next up, we were making some chain tensioners for Johnny 5. Here we were using the original Gen Mod vise. The current Gen 2 would also work fine, and you're able to use the fixed side mod vise as a center station, thus holding two parts in the front mod vise and two additional parts, whether they're same or different or op two in the back mod vise. This is a very flexible economic way to hold multiple parts in a relatively small amount of real estate, certainly much less area than a traditional machining vise would require. In widget 147, we wanted to use G54 and G55 as we were machining this part. So this video walks through how we program that infusion, how we design and machine the fixture, and then how we program the actual machining of the final parts using G54 for the left part and G55 for the right part. This is probably one of the most common questions that we get from folks that are trying to understand how the world of CAM and post-processors and the machine control all tie together. And we go over a couple of goofs, like making sure you've got the correct clearance heights. And finally, a Johnny 5 robot tote tip here, where again, we're using the mod vise with the fixed center station that allows us to hold two parts, one in the front, one in the back, and a relatively small footprint. It gives us good part stability along these relatively long or thin parts and allows us to get two done in one setup. For more information on using G54, G55, and multiple offset scenarios in Fusion 360, check out our video here where we dive into that exact topic. And now I want to spend some time talking about best practices and lessons that we've learned over the years. I'm going to use this example from the Fusion 360 CAM samples. In this demo file, they're using a pair of dual station vices. Dual station vices have a fixed center and the outside jaws each move inward to clamp on the part. That means the center two jaws are, are your fixed jaws that will be better served if you're using your jaw as a reference point for an offset versus the floating jaw. The way this sample file is programmed puts the coordinate system for op one and op two on the center section of each vise. Now the good news is that shouldn't move. That center block should remain quite stable and thus accurate and consistent over time. However, we found over the years that we much prefer to have a coordinate system specific to each piece of material or generally for each fixture locations. Now an exception that we'll talk about in a minute will be high density fixtures. But on a part like this, I want to be able to control the machine's location for this first part as well as for the second part. And the reason is that if I happen to switch out these jaws, I want to be able to control where each part is but not have to necessarily have them fixed specifically relative to each other. Similarly, on OP2 where we're using soft jaws to finish the parts, if I need to come in and take another skim pass on these soft jaws, I want to be able to control the location of each soft jaw independently and not have to have them be fixed relative to an arbitrary center location. Here's a great tip for running production parts over time, meaning you'll set up and tear down this part over many months or years. When we're finished with OP1, the part will look like this. We'll have what we call a hat top on the bottom, which will flip over and place into the soft jaws to start OP2. When you're done running these parts, leave yourself two extra completed op ones. That way when you start this job up again at a future point in time, you've got two parts that are ready to load into op two. This saves you the need or hassle of having to run a separate program 
where you just start creating two op ones before you can then properly load the full program that's gonna run both two op ones and two op twos. On that note, I highly recommend getting familiar with NC programs in Fusion 360. These allow you to save very specific settings about the post processor, coordinate systems, and even the cam operations which is really helpful because eventually, if you're finishing this job, you may need to run only one pair of OP2s. NC programs can help you save that structure and avoid the risk of accidentally posting the wrong code. There are two different ways of tackling multiple parts from a CAM and patterning standpoint. The first is to use CAM to create patterns. Doing so, you would have one coordinate system and the CAM software will be duplicating the toolpath at certain specific locations. The second method, which is my preferred method, is duplicating the setup where you would have multiple work coordinate systems. In other words, G54, G55, G56, etc. First, let's show patterning in the CAM software. There's three different general ways a part like this could be patterned. You can pattern it with a linear pattern. In that case, you're just plugging in the direction and the distance space between the parts. In this case, it's 6.75 inches. You can also use duplication pattern, which is a pretty cool technique where you can select a point on the source model and a point on one or more target models to create that duplicated pattern. It saves you the hassle of having to measure that distance and it would keep it parametric. And the third method, which is really cool, is component pattern. Where component pattern really shines is the automatic mode. If you have a palette with a higher part density, it will automatically recognize all the subsequent components to machine them, and it can even handle components that aren't in the same orientation. But the downside of all these methods is that they require a consistent spacing between your parts. And we have often found there's a lot of value to having separate coordinate systems, especially for op two finishing work, where you want to control the exact datum of each individual workpiece or raw material. I would much prefer to run these parts with unique offsets for each of the four instances. So G54, G55, G56, and G57. And to do that is incredibly easy. I'm going to get rid of that linear pattern we just made. And instead, right click on the setup, edit, and under post process, simply say multiple WC offsets, change our number of instances to two so that we run two parts, click OK, and you don't see anything happen. But when we post this code out, you'll see the first instance start as G54, and further down we have G55. G56 and G57 would come from our second setup, so I would do the same thing, edit the setup, multiple coordinate systems, two, but start your WC offsets from three. The way this works is offset zero and one are both G54, two is G55, three is G56. So from offset three, we'll, we'll create two instances that will create G56 and G57. Anytime you're patterning in Fusion 360, you have control over the operation order. Preserve order means it will run the full first part every single operation, every single tool change before it moves to the second. Order by operation means it will run the facing on the first part, then the facing on the second part, and then say the adaptive on the first part, adaptive on the second, etc. Order by tool means it will do as much work with that one tool on all the parts that it sees available before it does a tool change. This is actually great because it minimizes tool changes which both require time and long-term mechanical wear on your machine tool. And Fusion is intelligent enough to know that it can't skip ahead. In other words, if you use a quarter inch tool for roughing, but you then have to do some drilling, and then you later use that same quarter inch tool, it will not consolidate the quarter inch tools and cause a collision. It will do all the quarter inch tools work that it can before it switches to the drill, and then it will later call that quarter inch tool back. Two tips on higher density or higher volume production workflows. The first is that Sometimes the toolpaths can get really noisy. You have control now in Fusion over the visibility of what you wanna see. In this case, the yellow linking moves are really helpful, but if you wanted to turn them off at the bottom of your screen under show hide leads and links, you could turn off links and you now only see the leads and the cutting moves. And finally, it doesn't make sense to pattern everything. In this case, we wanted to machine the edge of each of these parts. You're best off doing so with a single 
2D contour that runs the full length of the part. Easiest way to do this is by creating custom sketch geometry in the CAD side of Fusion. And this is much better than a pattern instance, which is going to have a lead in and lead out and linking move and additional lines of G-code for each instance of the pattern. Card here to the NYC CNC page where we've got all of these videos as well as all the others from our 10 part fixturing recap series. Otherwise folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed, take care. See you soon.